Okay, welcome to uh, part two of uh, Smith chart uh, series of uh, calculations. Uh, we looked at, in part one, the uh, fundamentals of the Smith chart. We looked at the mechanics of the Smith chart uh, in terms of uh, the impedance mode, and we learned how to uh, plot uh, impedance values on the Smith chart and uh, some of its uh, behaviors. So the second part here deals with a, a real example of how we would find the impedance uh, looking into a transmission line based on a particular load and a length of line and an operating frequency, all critical values in order to determine this using the Smith chart. Um, the transmission line will have a velocity factor of 0.7. So the problem reads the following. A 50 ohm transmission line, 6 meters in length, is terminated by a load impedance of 50 plus J50. The system operates at 100 megahertz and the transmission line has a velocity factor of 0 0.7. Determine the input impedance of the line. So we'll start the slideshow. <clears throat> and uh, we now see our first step. We have a, a paper Smith chart. Once again, we'll be looking at the paper Smith chart for several of our series before we look at the computerized version. So we must normalize the load impedance to the Smith chart. Our load impedance is 50 plus J50, and we want to make the center of the Smith chart 50 ohms. So in order to do that, we normalize it by dividing 50 ohms, our desired impedance, into the load impedance. Uh, and that gives us a value of 1 plus J1. So you'll see the red arrow goes to a red circle. The red circle defines where our real value of 1 and our inductive reactive value of 1 intercept. So by virtue of the fact that it says plus J1, we know that we are in the upper hemisphere, and that is an inductive value. So our complex impedance is a real plus inductive reactive value. So if you want to find how you get to those two points, you just simply follow those two lines till they intercept, 1 plus J1. So now that we know where our load impedance is positioned on the Smith chart, we draw what's called a... Um, impedance circle of the transmission line. This impedance circle can be used, can be drawn with a compass and you simply uh, take your two points from the center to the load and draw the circle. <clears throat> so anywhere on that circle will be a uh, different impedance value. Uh, by virtue of the fact that the transmission line is not matched, you'll have variations of impedance along the line over a angular range of 180 degrees. Remember, the Smith chart is 180 degrees, not 360 degree displacement. So the next thing uh, that we do is uh, position a, a reference to the outside of the Smith chart. <clears throat> so in order to do that, we must scribe a line from the center of the Smith chart through the load point of 1 plus J1 and on through to the outside in that fashion there. So it's very important to know, uh, realize what value the blue line cuts through the outside of the chart. Here it looks like about 0.162. So now we have a reference at the outside of the Smith chart. Remember the outside of the Smith chart is uh, scaled to uh, values less than 0.5. Increments of values less than 0.5. Why 0.5? Because of the half wavelength variations and the 180 degree displacement. So now that we have the uh, reference, we can move toward the generator, but we must do a calculation first. So there's our calculations to the top left. Um, if we divide the speed of light by the operating frequency of 100 megahertz, multiply it by the velocity factor, we find that we have a guide wavelength of 2.1 meters. Our transmission line is 6 meters long. Divide 2.1 into 6 meters and we find that we must go 2.857 rotations clockwise in order to get back to the source. Now, we really only need to rotate within the last half wavelength because the Smith chart is restricted to one wavelength rotations. That's easy to do. We subtract 2.5 from 2.857 and we're left with a value of 0.357 incrementations on the outside of the Smith chart. So it's less than 0.5. So we take our reference of 0.162 that the blue line scribes through, add our 0.357 that we just calculated, and we find that we must move to a position 
of 0.519 on the Smith chart. Now we've already stated that uh, the Smith chart uh, only is scaled to 0.5, so we have to go 0 0.019 beyond the 0 0.5 point. And where will that bring us? Well, if we follow the arrows, so we move clockwise, the arrows will bring us to that point, and where that point is, we scribe a line from the center of the Smith chart out to 0 .0, 0 0.519 or 0 0.019, and where the blue line now intercepts the impedance circle, that will define the impedance looking into the transmission line. So you can see the circle that we've just added is over that point of the transmission line. So the transmission line um, is uh, defines both positions of uh, source impedance and load impedance. <clears throat> and we've just determined the source impedance. And we call that the impedance looking into the line. In other words, that's the impedance a source would be seeing at its connection point. Now what is that Impedance? Well, we can determine the normalized value at that point right there where the orange arrow is illustrating. And looking at that point, we find that we have an input impedance, a normalized value of 0.38 plus J1. We can also determine the uh, load admittance, uh, just as a side note, by extending uh, the blue line from the uh, source through to where the circle in the southern hemisphere of the impedance circle is, and we can find our load admittance. And there's the two points right there, our impedance looking into the line and the load admittance. The load admittance we don't really need in this example, but uh, for future reference, that's where how you would perform that act. Now, a final point, how do we convert that source impedance back to a real-world impedance, or an unnormalized value? So the question at the bottom right states, what is the real world impedance looking into the line? Well, we simply take the point 38 plus J.1, and it's plus J because we're still in the inductive reactive hemisphere of the Smith chart. We multiply it by 50, and we find we've got a real world input impedance of 19 plus J5 ohms. Thank you. So there will be a part three that will be looking at a more advanced version of uh, impedance matching using a stub, and in that application will have to be in the uh, admittance mode.